All right, so welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden meetup. My name is Roland and I'm your guest for today's session. And in today's session, we will have, um, I think a really cool session because we will uh, see how we can create the chain code with Node.js. And uh, this session today is part of, uh, I think, a longer experiment. So I try to uh, compare the Node the Node.js chain code with the Go chain code and try to understand what is uh, better. So uh, in case of performance, in case of um, um, development and so on. So, and uh, today's session, we will start with a simple, with a simple um, chain code use case. And uh, first we will look a little bit at the use case. And then I have developed a small guideline how you can get started with the Node.js development. So because um, today we will see uh, a little bit from the dev Docker dev network. So for the peer dev mode we have used uh, in the last sessions. And then we will uh, develop this uh, chain code and we will see how we can uh, build from scratch this chain code and test it uh, during the development process. And uh, then when we have finished this, we will install this chain code in the test network. And, uh, and that's very easy because uh, the, new net the new network script gives us um, a single command line. And with this single command line, we can create the network and install this chain code um, as well. And then we have a uh, um, situation where we have uh, two organizations with two peers, and then we can test this chain code. And finally, I have prepared a small um, push script where we can test how fast my test machine is and how, how many transactions per second we can uh, create with this chain code. And in the next and in the upcoming sessions, um, we will compare this with um, the same use case in the Go length, for example, and then we can compare, is this faster, is this slower? And um, also in terms of uh, peers. So I think that's an important question. Uh, is a network uh, slower when you have more than two peers, three peers, 10 peers, 20 peers, for example? and which impact has a proper endorsement policy. And uh, yeah, so that's a little bit uh, an ongoing work from my side and, uh, and small parts of that I would like to show you uh, with you. And uh, I have created a small example. I call this commission statement uh, because uh, it's, um, it does a little bit of calculation. It calcul cal calculates a fee for a recommendation and the fee for a for an revenue. And uh, yeah, so, and we have two organizations. We have a producer and we have a seller. So we can uh, also test this with other uh, JavaScript examples uh, or Node.js examples, uh, for example, for the, how you can connect uh, to the network and uh, how we can um, use um, a little bit uh, on permissions on uh, what, so something the, the seller could see and uh, what which information the producer can get from this example. And yeah, here the links as every time. And I have also uh, updated the GitHub repository with all the source codes from this session. And, and so you should, uh, should be able to follow uh, this, this, this session today. But uh, the session builds a little bit on last sessions and, uh, and the first session. So um, yeah. Um, yeah, here are two important links. Here we have a link to the Fabric chain code uh, repo. So uh, this is a good starting point to learn a little bit and read a little bit about the node chairs implementation of the chain code. So a short overview about my use case. So um, this is a simple 
situation. So we have two organization. This is uh, fit to the test network example. So we can imagine organization one is the producer and organization two is here the seller. And we say when the produ producer um, gets a recommendation from the seller, and then uh, the seller should earn 1% uh, of the revenue. And uh, when the producer uh, have a closed sale uh, from this revenue, then the seller will get 10% or so. So that's only uh, for testing. But that's also a good example for later when we say uh, that um, when it comes to discussion, what is the smart contract and what is the chain code? So, and um, I would like to explain this, that, that in a permissioned uh, situation, in a permissioned um, blockchain network, then we have, the companies have to come to an agreement. So the companies from organization one and organization two, they must uh, come to an agreement that they say, okay, I accept uh, your 1% or I accept your 10% for a closed sale. So this is a smart contract and this smart contract um, must uh, be done by the companies, by the, manager, by the managers and uh, CEOs from these two companies. And the chain code, is the programmable uh, interpretation of this written smart contract uh, between the organizations. And um, what happened when we have to uh, change this parameter here? When we say, okay, now uh, I gave you so much uh, recommendations and um, yeah, I want 2% or 3%. And then we can test with this use case, the upgrade process. So how we can upgrade the chain code in the running, um, in the running network. And this is also a good example, uh, which we can do later and see how we can upgrade this chain code. And then today we will implement this in with Node.js and uh, later we will see it also the same in the Golang and then we compare it. We compare it here uh, in the container image size. This is one um, key parameter, uh, for example, so that we can see how large is this Node.js container uh, when it's running um, and how large is a Golang container. Is it larger, is it smaller, for example? And then uh, we will test a little bit the performance uh, in this, in the test network, uh, with the default configuration, with the default block size, with the default um, endorsement policy, and uh, this is also a good way to see. Um, in my test case, uh, with I think it's one CPU and uh, two gigabyte RAM. Also, I don't know. I have to look. Uh, but uh, in reality, I reach to nine transactions per second in this situation. So, and with this, we can uh, analyze the system and then we can see how many, um, how, how strong must uh, our virtual machine must be to come to the certain transactions uh, which we want. And uh, we can test this, we can uh, extend this analysis also with some other components like the endorsement policy, how many endorsers you will have in your network. So. Is there an impact if you have 10 endorsers in this network or, um, or not? So makes it sense to have more endorsers or not? So yeah, this are some, this are some facts which we can uh, analyze here in this scenario. And uh, the asset here has four, five values. So, and uh, this is a little bit constructed so that we can see some, some special things. So we can see the transaction ID. So we can get the transaction ID from the uh, chain code. Then we can store a string. Then here we store a, a date. So that's an interesting part uh, to store a timestamp or um, a date in the asset itself, in the state of the asset, because um, this is maybe a an, an problem uh, or a mistake which someone could do because um, with JavaScript, you can create a new date, a new timestamp very easily with the new date command. But if you do this in the chain code, then you will have a problem because uh, in the, in the um, execute of, uh, uh, 
uh, phase, uh, then uh, you will, because the, the client sends the chain code to endorser one, and then this endorser uh, creates the asset or this, the, this, this object, and then a new date is created. And if this is done also in the second, uh, in the, with the second endorser, then another date is created. And because also when there are only milliseconds between this request, then we will not have the same asset and then your transaction will fail. So that's an important part that when we use dates here, then we have to give the correct date to the chain code here. Then we have here two numbers, yeah. And then we will implement two sim simple methods. We will implement the methods to store the, this uh, commission statement asset. And then we will uh, query this. And uh, for this, I will use a so-called uh, composite key. And uh, this is a way um, we use only uh, the LevelDB database and the LevelDB database has only a key to store. And then we can, normally we can only query the key or a key range or this uh, composed key. But when we do this in a certain way, when we have a, um, a situation where we say, okay, we want all revenues by year, by the year 2020, then we can uh, query this in this way. Or we can uh, query this when we say we want, want all um, revenues for 2020 and the month March, for example, then we can, can do it as well. But we can, we can extend this also for the day, um, but I haven't this here. And uh, when we uh, add the transaction ID, then we will get the, the, the single um, revenue. So this is an, uh, an example to understand how we can use a composite uh, key in a special configuration like this use case. So this is not useful for every situation. So this is useful, uh, useful because I say, my I don't use CouchDB. Here, I don't, I won't only use the, the level DB uh, because uh, this could also be, have an impact on your performance and on your security and so on. So, and um, yeah, so, and for this situation, I want to query all revenues um, per year, per month or the particular uh, re revenue transaction. So, so that's the use case. And um, a short overview, what we are going to do now. So for this example, we need here in the left box, um, we have this uh, Docker environment for the local testing. So I use the setup from the session uh, in the end of January here. Um, so, and, uh, and then we use, um, uh, we try to install this in the test network. And uh, this is the material from the, uh, from the beginning of this session. So uh, on, on the beginning of October last year. Uh, so this is, uh, this, this is built on, on, on this part. And then in the middle here, we will uh, use the favorite contract API uh, in the Node.js implementation to build this particular chain code. And uh, we will try to run this here during the development so that we see, okay, when we do this step, then we can uh, check if this is running or not. And, uh, but we can, in this dev mode, we cannot test the problem, what we have seen, what I have mentioned earlier with the date. So because in this peer dev mode scenario, we have only one peer and uh, then we will not have a problem with the date. So that's, is to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, so the final test in the test network, um, but this test could be, uh, could be done very easily because this uh, in the Fabric 2.2, the network script uh, can, can make this with a single, with a single command line, uh, the installation and the, the whole approved process and so on. So it's very easy to do this. And with in this, and then we can test this chain code. Um, yeah. So, and that's our um, lab. Um, what we are going to do today. Okay. So now let's start. 
So, okay. Here, I have um, I used the Visual Studio Code. And here I have the few examples. And in these few examples, uh, I have created this Docker uh, dev network. And uh, this is uh, the same uh, the same setup which we have used uh, in, in this session. And uh, here we would like to create a new folder and we call it CS1. And uh, and we need the index GS file. And this is here our um, working directory. But I will work a little bit also here in the terminal. Roland, can you make the font just a little bigger? It's kind of hard to see. Yes. Thank you. So this is this and this one. So. Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, so. So fabric, fabric samples and here the dev network. And uh, yeah. So, and in this dev network, I have here my chain code folder. And in this chain code folder, we have here the Node.js folder. And, uh, and this new CS1 folder. So, and we need this index.js that I. So, um, to get started with this, so we can call, uh, we need an NPM project. And we call the NPM init command. So we can uh, say yes to this. And then we have here, we should have here a package JSON file. And uh, in this package JSON file, uh, we will have, we need two dependencies. Uh, and important is here the script um, object because uh, here we have to put our st start command uh, that the Node.js chain code uh, will start later when we deploy it. So, but we need first this and it's important that the index file, the, the, the start file is called index.js file here. And then we need two packages. We need um, I'll do this here. So we need uh, we can install this with npm install. We need the fabric contract API and the, the fabric uh, shim package. So these two packages we need, and um, we can install this with uh, the npm install command. And we save this to the package file. Package JSON file. Oops. Oh. So now we have this node modules folder and uh, in our package JSON file, we have this two new dependencies here. And then um, we need this, oh, no, okay. so that's this, so. And then we need uh, um, a structure, a small structure. So we create a folder, maybe lib. And, uh, We'll copy this. And uh, we have to export two elements here for the chain code. So, and here we have uh, our chain code. So 
And in the slip folder, we create another file. So maybe CS01.js. And this file will contain our chain code logic. And then we have to export a contract, this contract property with then a way of, we can have different uh, contracts. So, and uh, this is the contract here. And then we have to export also an uh, object and an, 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 an property here with the contract uh, object here, which we have included here. So, and this is uh, what we need here in the index.js file. And um, in the lib file, in the lib folder, so, So then we will have here this file. Okay. And here we will create our chain code. And uh, the first thing what we need, we have to include this fabric contract API. And then we have to create a class. which extends the contract. So, and uh, in this contract, we need the constructor. And uh, we can call here a name or not. So that's not important, uh, but uh, uh, I think it's uh, useful for logging. So we can here, we can set here a name which uh, identifies this uh, contract. And in this constructor, we can, I have here the transaction ID uh, because uh, I need it on several times. And then we can make here, uh, oops. And then we will have two functions here. And uh, this function is a function is called before transaction and after transaction. So we don't have to use this, uh, but when we use this, then we can uh, use this for certain things or so, uh, for logging for example. So when we need a transaction ID from this, from this uh, transaction, and uh, then we can say, okay, before the transaction happened, before we're in the main process of the transaction uh, will come, then we can uh, grab this transaction ID and we can uh, store this in, in this, uh, in this uh, property here, in this. And uh, this before transaction, uh, has here one variable. So this CTX is called the context. And this context has an, another object. And this is this stop contract, the stop object. And the, all, I think most, most um, methods are available over this stop object. And, uh, and one of them is this get transaction ID. And then we will get the unique transaction ID from this particular uh, transaction here. And then we can uh, store it here in this uh, uh, property. And then we can do a logging, for example. And the same is for after transaction. And uh, after the section uh, is also called when uh, the transaction is uh, finished. And uh, so, and with this, yeah, so, and uh, when we have this in place, then we can try, uh, we have to export this, and then we can try if our test network will work. We can start our test network. So. And then.
So in this dev network here, uh, we the first thing to start the dev network is that we have to export the uh, fabric config path, and this is the path to the sample configuration. And here we have the sample configuration, and that is what we need. And then we have to create the uh, first a new genesis block for this. This genesis block is here in the artifacts folder. You see it here. And then we need the, the uh, channel create transaction, it's the same. Also in the artifacts folder, and we have here for the channel one transaction. And then, we have here the Docker composition from the last session here. And the important part here is that we start the node with this uh, option peer chain code dev uh, true. And uh, this gives us the possibility to start the chain code by hand and start and stop, start and stop the chain code. So, and in this way, we can uh, reload the modified chain code very easily. So, and then we can say Docker. Docker compose up. So, okay, this works. And then the second terminal. Um, we have to create and join the channel. And this is also done with the standard uh, commands here. So, and then we can join the channel. And then we can install the chain code. It's a little bit difficult to copy this. And uh, first we have to package the chain code and here and the important part is that we use here this option lang with node. And then we have a label, the label is the same like in the Go version. And the path here uh, is linked to this CS01. And then we should, ha should have here an entire GSET package with the pack with this tar archive and with the chain code uh, inside. And then we have to install it with p install. And uh, if this is done, we need this uh, identifier here. We can query this also when we also the command peer live cycle chain code query installed and gives us also this uh, package identifier here. And uh, yeah, so I export this and store it in an environment variable so that I can use it a little easier. And then we can start this so I have to minimize this.
Wieso? Hm. And this is the command to start, start and stop the chain. So to start the chain code. So we have to stop, we can stop the chain code with control C uh, or we can kill this process. But the important part here is that we, we, we use here the node model spin fabric chain code node uh, command here. And this, and this is the reason why we have to install this fabric uh, shim package. In the package JSON. So when we install the favorite shim package here, then we will get this uh, program here, and that's and that program we need to start the chain code. No such file or directory. Um, okay, so we have to switch into the chain code folder. So. And now we have a running chain code here. But the next step is that uh, we have to approve it. So, and so to start this, it's a little bit, uh, um, yeah, there's a small effort to do this. Um, but uh, if it's running, then we only have to start and stop it. For example, um, yeah. So we need a and we need the the package ID again. And then we have to approve this chain code. So, and yeah, so there is nothing special in this command. Um, that's the same command uh, which we have used in the past. Yeah. Then we can check also the readiness of this chain code. Then you see here, organiz the sample organization one has approved this and then we can uh, commit this chain code. And you see, we have a valid uh, transaction here. And uh, yeah, I think now we are ready to test our chain code. So, so and to test our chain code, um, hmm, maybe I'm not really ready for this now. So I think we should implement the uh, store method first. I will copy this. So, and here we have this uh, store method. So, that's very easy to understand. So the important part here is we have this context. So uh, this CTX uh, variable here, and with this CTX variable, we have uh, uh, access to this stop implementation. And then here we have the possibility to create this composite key and also to store the, uh, to, to, to store the, the, the new state with the put state command here. And uh, so, the first part here is uh, is simple. So 
We have the commission fee, we have our revenue, and we import here our timestamp. This timestamp is a simple um, JavaScript date. And then we have here uh, a small uh, case where we can say, okay, when we have this uh, record type, then we calculate here 1%. Uh, of the revenue, and then we have 10% uh, here. Uh, otherwise, we have 10%, and then we have a commission of 10% from this revenue here. Then we can create here a short um, JavaScript object uh, as a model. So we say we store the revenue, we store this commission, the timestamp, the type, and the transaction ID. And then uh, we say we want uh, a new key and uh, we have the possibility to create a so-called composite key and that means that the key is not a single number a single string or something like that so we can have a combination and uh, we can define a, a combination like we want uh, with this uh, tilde uh, delimiter here so we say the first is the year month and the transaction id so the call is here as index name. So, and here I the, the only thing I do here is uh, um, so here I have this error in, in place. Here, that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so and then here uh, we create the string and uh, then we can create this composite key uh, with. Uh, the index name here. So with the string here, this is the uh, the key. So and uh, here we have the values of these keys. Yeah. The, the year is a string, the month is a string, and the transaction ID. This is a string. Um, and then this uh, method creates us this new key. And then we can use this new key uh, as a key. And uh, we store uh, the model here, the created model as a buffer object. Uh, and uh, that's it. So, and with this, we can, we can create um, a new key and we can query later this key. Uh, when we say, when we give only the year, then we will have all transactions from this year uh, for this month. And uh, then uh, we can have say, okay, we want this particular uh, transaction. Then we have to use the whole uh, combination here also with the transaction ID here. And then we can save this stage to uh, the ledger here. And uh, that's it, I think. And then we can compose here the return value. So I say, okay, I want to know uh, the, the year the key, so I will give here the, the, the unique key uh, that we can use it later uh, to query and to see uh, what is stored uh, into the ledger. So, but this is also uh, depends on, you know, on your example for it, if you want. And yeah, and we, do, we wrap this in a try block. So then if there is an error, then we can catch this error and throw uh, here a message uh, how we, how we want. And yeah, that's it. And uh, okay, then let me put also the, the query. Now let us test it. So, okay, now we have now changed the chain code. So we have modified this file and uh, then we have, and when we try now to test this, uh, then we have, then we can stop this container here in this chain code and we have to start it again. And now we have loaded this new chain code and uh, we don't have to repeat the improve the install step uh, and the approve and commit step here. We can only start and stop this container, this chain code in this terminal here. Uh, when we stop it here with control C and then we start it again with the command, uh, with the fabric uh, chain code node start command here. And then, 
And let us try invoke this chain code here. And we do this with the command line, be a chain code invoke. So the order address, the channel, the, the chain code name. So, and the C uh, option here uh, has our arguments. And we say, okay, we call the method store uh, CS. Then we have a value of 100. And uh, here we will have a time stamp. So that's a fixed string here. And then we have this uh, type. Uh, and is in it is um, only because it's the first uh, transaction here in the network. Ah, and it works. So we have your chain, chain code invoked successfully. And we see here, we can do a logging. Yeah. And you see here the before transaction yeah, statement. And you see here the after transaction statement. And now we can try to change this. So, and many more. So, when you try to invoke this now, okay, the image we don't need it. Then you see the lock command is the same like before. So, and to change this, we have to stop it and we can start it again. And we, when we try to invoke this, then you see here, you have a, a new chain code version. And in this way, you can um, develop your chain code and you can test it. Yeah? And you don't have to do the, the whole uh, install and uh, approve process. And I think that's a, an easy way to uh, see if your chain code here is uh, working, um, especially for a small, uh, in the small test. And now let us implement the, 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 the query method. So, and this is this get chain, uh, get CS per year and month. We have also here the, the CTX too. Uh, and uh, here we use, I use another uh, example. So uh, in the first version here, we say, okay, we, we have a, a revenue, we have the revenue timestamp and we have the, uh, C, the this CS type. So, yeah. And then we can uh, use these variables here in our function. But uh, when we have here a lot of uh, parameters or we don't want this, we can have this also uh, with this get args uh, method here. And this get, uh, get args method gives you exactly these parameters here. All parameters which you have to give to the, uh, during, the, uh, during the, the call. So when we, when we try to query this, we will use something like that. And you see you have here the, uh, the function. And then we will use here uh, only one parameter, for example. And uh, we try to uh, separate this here with this tilde, but you can use every delimiter if you want. So it's only in my case here. And uh, with this arx command, we will uh, get this information. And um, here we'll receive two, we will here, here we will receive an array with two fields. And in the first field, we will have the function name. Uh, and in the second field, uh, we're starting with the second field, we have here uh, the, um, the, these, these, par these parameters here. Okay. So, but we have only one parameter here, so. And then we can grab this parameter and split this uh, with this delimiter. And then we will have here um, another array uh, which we can use in a, for each loop, for example, to push the elements uh, to a keys uh, array. 
And yeah. And then we will have this key survey here. And this key survey uh, is uh, used here in this uh, method, get state by partitional composite key, which is also delivered through this CTX stub uh, objects here. And uh, yeah, and the only thing what we have to do here is to query this, we have to say, okay, how is our key composed? So with this year method and uh, transaction ID, and then we have to uh, deliver here an array with elements in this, in the correct order. So, but the good thing is when we only deliver the year, then we will receive all transactions from this year. When we deliver uh, the year and the month, then we will receive all transactions from January, February, and so on. And when we deliver uh, also the final transaction ID, then we will uh, receive the exact transaction. But this will only work in this order. So you cannot say I want uh, only the, um, I want all transactions from every year in the month of October, for example. So we have to, uh, we have to use um, the, we can say prefix, I think it's a, like this one. So yeah. you cannot say, give me only the, or give, me, give me the transaction regarding this transaction ID. If you want a, a function like this, then you have to create here a new function, which uh, does this. Yeah. And uh, this works only in this order. So you can leave, uh, you can leave transaction ID, you can leave month, and uh, yeah, and this will receive uh, uh, so an iterator function, and uh, then we can loop through this iterator function with this uh, with a, with a while loop. So um, this is um, this snippet is also from the official documentation. So uh, for me, it's a little bit uh, yeah strange to use here a while loop. So. But um, I copied this from the uh, from the documentation. So this is also called the old way. And then the documentation you will find uh, a new way. But in my case, uh, and um, and in the time I uh, I could spend to 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 do this example, uh, it doesn't work. So I switched back to this version um, to finish this example here. Uh, but in the documentation you will find um, and. Uh, another way with uh, uh, for a wait loop. And, uh, uh, but I think this hasn't worked here in my example. But- Hey Roland, okay. you have a couple of uh, questions in the chat, just FYI. Oh, let us look. So it's not, it's, I have to say sorry, because um, I have to look. So, Function store C returns key. Where does it get stored? Can we access it? Mm, yeah, it's it's stored in the in my in my uh, ledger in my demo ledger here, and um, uh, and you can access this with uh, with a query here with the chain code query be a chain code query function. And uh, we have to implement this function. And that's what we are talking uh, now. So we have to implement a function to query this information from the command line. And uh, when we don't want the command line, then we have to use um, the Node.js SDK, for example, uh, to connect to the network and uh, make a client application where, and query uh, this, this ledger. But uh, this, is an, this is another step. So uh, in this example, we see we use the only the command line option here, but there is no diff. There is from the chain code side, there is no difference uh, between this version here uh, to query the chain code, and if you use the uh, Node.js SDK, it's only here how you pass these parameters here and how you query this. And stored is it here in this network here. 
So we have a test network here. This is the DEF network. Um, in my slides, you find the date for, on the GitHub paper, you find the, the documentation from this. And here we have a Docker composition. So in this test network here, we only have a single orderer. This is a solo orderer, I think, or not, I don't know. Um, and uh, we have only a single peer. And on this peer, the data is stored. And the data is stored here in the ledger data. And that's where your, your ledger lives. And here you see it, you can see it here. But look at here, you can look here also. So I have, and this is the storage from the peer. And in this folders, you will have, uh, so all the ledger data, yeah. So, yeah, and so on. So in this, in the, in this demo network, you have a, a real hyperledger fabric network in the, in, with a level DB implementation and a single order. And uh, here, here is the data start. So you have persistent data here, so you, so you can stop this and you, uh, and you, and you can uh, start it again, this network, and then you can uh, use the ledger uh, again. So that's not, not the mock data, something like that. So this is um, a mini, mini uh, Fabric network. And uh, this is all. And this node starts here with the peer chain code dev mode. So this is, I think this is made for this situation. And you find this uh, documentation for this uh, here in the, oops. No. And you see here in this links. So, but be carefully, this is not um, explained in this release 2.2. So we have to switch to a release 2.3. And there you have, um, Getting started, no tutorials. So here you have running chain code in development mode. And this scenario is here descriptive. So but to be honest, the description here is not what I have used. So in this description here, you you use the native version of a peer and an orderer. And um, this is a different. So we are here in a session, um, well, peer dev mode comparison. You have here, the, you can run this network in two different modes. So I call this the binary mode. And this is the, uh, the setup, uh, which is also descriptive. But you need one terminal more. You need four terminals to run this, uh, but you don't have to use Docker for this. So you can use uh, uh, Fabric without Docker uh, because uh, in since the 2.2 version, I think we can run a peer and the orderer also in a native version. And, uh, but you can also uh, a Docker version of that and this, this is the network I have used today. And this is the um, explanation. So, yeah. and when you follow this guide, then you can uh, create this and start the network. So you see here, this is our uh, starting example. And uh, this is the, 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 the example for the Go chain code here and not for the, uh, for the Node.js chain code. But the steps are basically the same. But what, what you have here is uh, you have a running fabric network. So I hope this makes this a little bit clearer and you can follow here on my, on my GitHub repository. 
all the sessions. And that's why I have put here some dates. When you say here session uh, from 29 January, then this is the reference to this uh, meetup here. And here you can find uh, the guide for this. And here is also a guide when if you uh, start at the beginning, and then you have to install Fabric at all. And uh, you, we have, I have set up here a, a guide from the beginning, so from the preparation. And uh, I use here a digital ocean droplet, one CPU. And uh, that's also the same uh, what I have used here for, for this scenario. And you will see that's not so fast. We can have only nine transactions per second with the setup, but it's enough to test this. And uh, yeah. And here, the, the, the test network installation uh, is also scripted um, on the beginning of October last year. So and this is this session. So this is the first session here. OK. Um, yeah, what is the mode of storing certification? Is it possible to demonstrate storing of certs or using software? Um, no, today not, uh, because um, uh, this is an example we have to uh, provide uh, to prepare. And then uh, I can show it maybe in, in, uh, in a further in an upcoming session that we can show how we can use uh, soft HSM. OK, so another question to this. And uh, OK, so and, OK, let's go back to this. OK, so now we have implemented this um, get data function. And here we can query the last state of this uh, uh, of this of, of this trans of this asset, so it's important to understand. Uh, I use I use here several times the term transaction. So, uh, but we don't store a transaction here. Um, in general, we st we store an asset, and uh, when, if there is an asset, then an asset has a state, and then when we update this asset, then we change the state of the asset. And the transaction is only the, the, the container around this. So, but um, we don't have transactions here uh, where we store transactions. Uh, it's better to know that we store assets. And uh, we have an, an asset could be any object. So a name, yeah, um, a football team, yeah, whatever. And uh, then we, we change the asset, the state of this asset. And uh, when we modify one attribute here, so when we change the revenue, then we change the asset and we have a second version of this asset. And uh, this is triggered to a transaction. And this transaction uh, has a transaction ID and uh, yeah. But this is also an important part. So when we are uh, talking about the key, so what should be the key? And this, the key could be the car, for example, like uh, in the top car example, a marble name, like in the marble example. But the key could also be um, a transaction ID. So you can use this here. Uh, um, you can say that's an, an auto increment key. So like you use it in the in a MySQL database, for example. And uh, you get this key here in the before transaction uh, phase. And then you can use it here uh, as a key. And it will also work. And then you have an auto-incremented unique key. And this key is unique in this channel. So, yeah. Uh, and that's also important to know. So, but this is um, a long number. Um, and uh, it's not easy to query this key. So let's look here. So we see. This is the transaction ID here. And you see that's a long number. So it's maybe it's not so comfortable to query this, but it depends on your use case. 
in our scenario here, we don't have any update. So uh, think of a logging. So when you try to log some, some uh, results or some um, other informations, then, uh, and you have only one state, then you can use this transaction ID as a unique identifier for your key. And then it's difficult to query, but when you make a, um, here an, uh, a combination yeah, or a composite key, then you can uh, think of uh, a situation like this. And if the situation makes sense in your example, then uh, it's good to go. Okay, so now let's try if our query works. So the rest here is, uh, I think this is uh, important to know is that this uh, gate state per partitional composite key or gate state by range uh, will give you uh, always an iterator here. And uh, we can uh, walk through this iterator with uh, here in this next, with this next method. And, um, when, they, when, when we receive an object which has the done property here, then we can close the situator. So, and uh, that's why I have here this uh, console log elements. And then we will see uh, that if uh, we, um, if we are on the last uh, on the last asset here, then we will see this done here, and then we can close this iterator and return all the assets which we have pushed here to this uh, all assets all results array. Okay, so if this is ready, then we can uh, stop our chain code and start it again, and then. For examples, uh, dash network, so. And now let's um, test this. So, okay, let's test this. Uh, um, we have, so, oops, this is good. Okay, so. Do this and then we have an error. Why we have an error? Because get the CS. Ah, the metric name is wrong. Ah, and you see. We receive free transactions yeah, or free assets. So in our in, in our scenario, free um, revenues with hundred um, and all of this is in February here. Yeah, let's see. And then we try to modify this. No. And then we call this again. And you see, you have here this revenue from 2000. And then we try to use this tilde with uh, two. And then you receive here the March. And why the why March? March has here three, and uh, we have here two. So um, that's why um, the date starts uh, with zero and not with the month one. Uh, January is zero and not and not one. So, but this is something what you can improve in the chain code that this uh, number here is the same as the calendar months here. Yeah. But I think 
everybody who is using uh, JavaScript and Node.js uh, knows this. Um, but the important part is here that we say, okay, now we have only the three. So, and that's, that's a an, an very cool thing, uh, I think, because uh, now we can query uh, with the composite key here, we can query our, um, we can query our blockchain um, in, 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 with, in, with LevelDB. And uh, in LevelDB, we only can have an unique key as an identifier. And uh, that's important to see here. So we have only key and value. And the key is, must be unique. The key is unique. So, yeah, and the key would be and, yeah, T1, yeah, T2, for example. Yeah. And this will uh, deliver only a single result, not a multiple result, because you can only have here, a, uh, you, can, you have a, a key, a single key, a unique key. And with this combination here, then we can, we can make a key which, de which delivers uh, multiple results. And when we say, okay, we want this one here. Oh, this will not work. And then you have the single key. And this is possible through this composite key. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, and this is, this depends really on your use case, what you would like to query here. And then you can compose an index yeah, a key like your use case. And yeah, and here you see um, some login here. And here you see the, um, where is the done? I think, I don't know. Is it done now? And here you see the login form for that. Inside value store, okay. I want to see the done uh, console, console log. We do this. No, we do this. Let's start it again. And we use, yeah. and you see here the true, yeah. And that's the way how you can use a composite key to query um, level DP database and to receive more than one uh, results for a key. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, Need so I uh, need to pop up. Okay, ah, it's we are too we need too much time for this. Okay, so now our chain code is ready. So let us skip this. So do some logging. Okay, let us test it again. And then so in one more. Mm. 
So, and let's check it. And you see here um, our micro. No, we need three. Okay, so. And we have here our last example. Okay, so now I think that is working. And now we would like to install this as a final step here in the test network to test if this is really working in our um, in the real environment. So, and for that, we stop our test network here. So, um, and now it's important that you are sure that um, no corrupt container is running, no volume is running, uh, is available more. So let us check it Docker PS, then we can see uh, there is no running container, uh, Docker PS option A, there is no excited uh, or corrupt or whatever container. And we should also check the volume, Docker volume LS uh, shows here we have here some volumes. Okay, then we can prune it. Yes. And now we have a clean network. We can also know Docker network LS. So, okay, that's also the default configuration for that. And now we are switched to the, um, to the test network. And the test network is part of the favorite samples. And you can say that's a reference implementation um, okay, so, and now we would like to install this chain code here in this official test network. And this test network has two organizations, organization one and two has a beer, has a, has a, uh, a raft order, has a TLS and is TLS enabled and um, has all the defaults configurations, which uh, Fabric comes uh, by default. And um, the first thing is that we, we set our config, Fabric config path. So because we have to change it. So in the, in the, for the test network, the config path is uh, one in the parent directory. So if you don't know it, so look in. So, and the important part here is the core YAML file. So, and the config TX YAML file. So these both, and of course the order YAML file. So these three files are the important configuration files for your favorite blockchain. And Fabric needs to know where this is, where the files live. And this is done with this Fabric config path variable here. Okay, and then I as I have mentioned, we can install and start and create the network with a single uh, command. That's pretty cool. But I will show it a little bit before. So, so. And we can, in fact, there are, these are two commands. The first is the network uh, create channel command. So we say, okay, we create a channel with the name channel one. And we use the create channel option here. And this is the first step. And then all the crypto material, the organization key, TLS, and also the connection profiles for the Node.js client application, all this will generate that to this, uh, from this command here. And if this is ready, then we can deploy the chain code. So, and that's um, new here, I think, 
So, um, because when you deploy a Go chain code, you don't have to use uh, so much uh, uh, options here. And one important part here is that, okay, we say we deploy a chain, we deploy a chain code, yeah, then the channel where we have to deploy a chain code, and then the name, so this is the chain code name, and then the language. So, and you see, we use JavaScript. And when we look back to our, um, when, to the package command, when we do it by hand, we use the lang node. So I don't know why this is so, uh, but uh, when you use here node for Node.js, it will not work. So you have to use here JavaScript and you have to use here node for Node.js. Yeah. And then here we have the chain code version. Okay, that's the chain code version. That's uh, a number. So you can say always num number one. And then we have this sequence number. And this sequence number is important because every change on this chain code, uh, if you have an upgrade to this chain code, then you have to increase this, sequ this sequence number yeah, to two, three, four, and so on. But the chain code version could also be the version one, yeah, version 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, whatever. And uh, could also be the same here, but the sequence number is the number uh, which you have to increase when you do a chain code up. Great. And that's why I've said uh, in, the, in, the, in the presentation here. So uh, what happened if we uh, try to change this, uh, when you say 2% or 20%, whatever, uh, then we have to upgrade the chain code. And uh, the chain code sequence number here is the key for that. And yeah, and then the path to the chain code. And uh, that's it. So if this is all in place, then we can wrap this to a single command with the double end. Yeah. And let us try this and see if all this will work. Oops, no. So this takes some minutes. Um, yeah. But I think that's also a very fast way to test your chain code uh, in a, under a real uh, situation. So here now we have the second command, the chain code install command, and the chain code uh, deploy command. And you see here also the improved process is now here. So chain code install um, is installed on both peers. So in, on, on peer one on organization uh, one, peer zero organization one and peer zero organization two. And you see here the improved process, every steps we have to do by hand could be done in a single line here. And here see, you see here the sequence number here, sequence one. So important to recognize this. Okay, so and then huh, let us look. No, we have, ah, we have an error. Okay, one important step we have missed. I have mentioned this step, but I have forgotten this step. So uh, in the package JSON file, uh, in our development scenario, we have started the chain code by hand. But when we use uh, this in the real environment, then we need a way, so Fabric need a way to start this, this chain code. And this is done with the start option here. And I have forgotten to set the start, start option here.
So we don't need a test here. We could remove it. So, and this is also an important step here. So in the chain code folder here, uh, at the beginning, we have called the npm init command. And with this npm init command, we have received this package JSON file with this configuration here. And uh, when we do the deploy chain code command, then a new container is built. And in this container, all these fabric dependencies uh, will be installed. And uh, also the start command is important here. And, but that's not a problem because so, but now it's important to know, okay, so we have a running network here. Yeah? But when we look at Docker PS um, option A, then we see here also the started uh, chain code container. But they have failed. And uh, now uh, it's important to switch back to a clear setup. So the first step, what we do here is we are not Docker Compose now. So we can use uh, the network script, network uh, shutdown, and then we stop the network. And this, this uh, network uh, script uh, deletes all the uh, chain code container, the volumes, uh, and so on. And then we should have Docker PS empty. This is also empty. And Docker volume ls is also empty. So now we have a clear state and we can start from the beginning. Okay, now let us try again. And the command is the same. And uh, yeah, so this could be a little bit uh, nerfing, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, with this, with this, uh, with this uh, second version of Fabric, uh, I think, and this new uh, network um, script, it's uh, very easy to to make your uh, test network to create your net test network and also to install your own developed chain code of a very in a very easy way. So, and uh, okay. This takes some time, and then we can say here Docker sets. Then you will see, and you see here PS0 upon organization one and PS0 from organization two is running, and also the other is running. And then um, we should see the two uh, chain code containers uh, from the Node.js side. So we receive two chain code containers uh, because we have two. Oh, you see here, now it should work. So, all right. And you see here, this left peer, COR2. This is the Node.js chain code container from uh, organization, from peer zero, organization two. And this dev peer null zero uh, one chain code container is, you see here the chain code name. CS01 chain code, yeah. And now you see this is running here. And now you have installed a test network with your own Node.js um, chain code. I think that's pretty cool. And now we can test it. So the next step is that we um, can we create. So, and then we have to do some final steps. Um, yeah, so all the containers here are running in the background. So maybe it's a good idea to see the logs. This could be done also with a single command. We can use the Docker compose command uh, here. And uh, we have to say, uh, we have to set the position from the Docker compose YAML file here. So, and in the test network, in the, in the test network, there's a folder, it's called Docker. And there we have uh, different uh, YAML files and the default YAML file for the test network is this one. So, and the file, and then we can say, okay, we want the logs. 
then we see the logs. And then we use this F option. Then we have, uh, when we call this uh, without this, then we receive all the logs and the process uh, ends. So yeah, all the logs for this moment. But with the F option here, uh, then we have, uh, this is it's called follow uh, or a follow up. And then we will have a uh, continue. So here the, the terminal, the program is not blocked. And then where it's blocked. And then we, when we see um, some uh, debug messages or log messages, it will, will be printed here to the uh, terminal here. And then, but we can skip this also with control C, but in the background, the blockchain, uh, the fabric network is still running. So, and then, okay, to communicate now with the test network, we need uh, some environment variables. And uh, the test network came also with this, uh, uh, has also this preparated for us. And uh, this script, what we need is this environment var script here. And this you can find also in this, uh, in this folder, in this test network folder under scripts. And we have to uh, call this file. So, no. This is in the test network. Okay. And then we have the possibility to call a function. And uh, is, this function is also useful. So it's called set globals. And with set globals, one, we set all needed environment functions, which we need to communicate from the terminal uh, as an admin user from the organization one. And when we change this to set globals two, then we have all environment variables in place to um, act as an admin user from organization two. And that's also a very uh, cool feature. So now we are using organization one, but you can check this when you use the env command and you set grab core and you see here, all these environment variables. So yeah, you need the local membership service provider ID, you need the peer address and the port, you need here the TLS certificate, certificate here, and also the membership config path where the um, admin user has its membership service provider um, credentials and public and private keys. And here, because the test network is per default TLS enabled, so that's the option for that. So, and when we switch back to organization two, then you can see here, you have organization two in place, you have a different part here, and you have also here uh, the correct path to the admin of the organization two. And it's also very useful to do this here. Okay, so now we are using organization one. And yeah, and then um, I have prepared a small script to test this, but let us um, do it by hand for the first time. I have to copy this, it's a long command here. I will do it here. So, okay, now, so, so, okay. This is the first invoke command here, be a chain code invoke. And you see it's the same like in a test in the development network, but it's longer. Uh, and the reason why this is longer is because we have here the TLS enabled. So we have here the TLS uh, path to the PEM file. Then we have the channel here, that's the same. We have a chain code name, okay. Yeah. But here, that's important. Here we have a peer address from the local host and the TLS uh, root certificate from this host. And we have here another peer address. Yeah. And then we have here the C option with the argument. And uh, 
that is also the so this order TLS hostname override. This is all, all configuration stuff for the TLS uh, to be TLS enabled. But important to know is that in our in the test network, so the peer chain code invoke command here, this is the client. So the terminal is the client. The environment variables say, okay, I'm the client and this peer chain code invoke, yeah, use this environment variables to do the invoke. And this is now a client call. And um, the default installation uh, is, has an endorsement policy. And the endorsement policy uh, is per default, uh, the majority. And when that means that uh, the majority of all organizations have to approve, have to check if this transaction is where it is, is correct. And uh, with two organizations and the majority, that means that we need both, we need at least one uh, endorsement peer um, from organization one to have a valid transaction. And we need one endorsement peer from organization two. And these are the address. And that's the reason why we have to set up here two peer addresses. And um, that means that the client here, this is client command here, and this represent the client here, that this client sends the invoke, yeah, the execution uh, from this chain code here to this both endorsement peers. And when this both endorsement peers gave the same answer, the correct answer, and then uh, the transaction will be delivered to the orderer and so on. So, and uh, that's a little bit different here um, when you compare it to the death mode scenario, uh, which we have used uh, earlier. And that's the reason why this command is here uh, longer. When you do this with the Node.js SDK with the client, you don't have to take care on this um, uh, peer addresses and so on, because that's the job from the Node.js SDK. So when you have in place the Node.js SDK um, as a client application, as a Node.js client application, then it's very easy to query the data and you can uh, focus on the creation of the client application on your REST API and so on. So you don't have to care on all these certificates and all these uh, uh, peer addresses. Because the Node.js SDK uh, checks what is the endorsement policy and uh, knows through the gossip protocol that um, we need, oh, we need this local host, uh, we need this peer, we need this peer, or we need another peer and so on. So, and uh, that's the advantage uh, from the Node.js SDK. Okay, so now let us query this. So let us try this. So, okay, store, huh? this is the value. This is the, uh, we have six, so, and then we have record, so, okay. Let's try this and see what happens. Yeah, invoke successfully. And you see here, Okay, we have a key and here's the key. And then we can try to check the query. So channel one, um, but, and here you see another difference. Um, okay, so I don't need this. I need only this, no. And you see the peer chain code query command is much smaller because an invoke command is sent to the order. Yeah? And you need, uh, and uh, Fabric needs uh, uh, an improvement from the majority of all endorsement peers from all organizations. But the chain code query command yeah, here is only uh, sent to the, to the local peer and to the peer uh, from the organization one, from the environment variable. And that's the reason why the querying uh, uh, is, the query string here is much uh, smaller. 
Okay, so now then try this. And you see we have an error here. Ah, okay. We have the wrong name. Okay, I have to fix this in the documentation. Of course, I will do this. Um, so we need this name. Okay, this works. And you see the same. Okay. And now let's make a small stress test. And I have here created a script um, in the, here, the CS script. And here, this is a simple uh, patch script uh, where I try to invoke the chain code in, uh, we say in February here, or in March, so. And we say, okay, I read 1000 transactions. I um, store the start time and I store the end time here. And then I calculate the difference and then I do a small um, uh, math uh, that I said, okay, I would like to calculate the transaction per seconds. And I calculate here the maximum number of transactions uh, divided to the um, elapsed time in seconds. And then we can see how performant is this. And, and here you can, uh, here I have a, a random, revenue uh, between 1,000 and 10,000. Um, and then this is here set. So this is also maybe a little bit tricky. So if you are not so super familiar with uh, PASH, PASH scripts, then uh, it's a little bit difficult to um, set an PASH variable under uh, single dots and double dots here. So uh, uh, under double dots, it's no problem. So then you have this situation, you have double dots here and you can use uh, this and this patch variable here as a, like a string, for example. But this will not work when you have here single quotes. And in this scenario here, we have to use the single quotes because we have to, this is a JSON string here. This is a JSON string. And for the JSON string, we need the double quotes here um, yeah, that's a valid JSON string uh, in the uh, re in, in the sense of fabric here, yeah. and that's the reason why we have here to, we have to use here single quotes, and then when we use here this uh, hash variable, then we have to close this here, the single quotes here and here, and then we have to open here the single quotes. Yeah, so. But that's uh, only as uh, I'm sure most of you know this. And uh, but uh, for me, it wasn't uh, really clear why uh, this is so must be so complicated. But now I have figured out. Okay, so and that's it. So um, when we try to start this, so make ten transactions now for the first to see uh, if this will work. Okay, so now let us uh, see an H top, for example, so that you can see a little bit about the performance from the system. And we see here, um, we have a single core uh, machine and we have two gigabyte RAM here. And uh, so the test may work. So uh, we can see Docker PS um, size, I think. Yeah. yeah, so, and you see here one, um, you see, okay, the chain code container they use here um, and virtual amount of, uh, of space from 300 megabytes here. So, yeah, and you see here, you can, 
I don't know if this uh, much or not. So, and that's part of this exercise here to understand is this much in, co in comparison uh, with Golem, for example. So what is the number here and what's the number here? And uh, okay, so um, to start the script, the only thing we have to do is, yeah, start the script. And you see, we are done. We have here 10 invokes. Yeah, it took 1.13 seconds. So it leads to eight transaction per second in this configuration. And let me say, okay, we make 500 here. Do you have a little bit more? And you see here, now we have reached 100% CPU. So, yeah, but we have enough memory. So the memory is not increasing here, yeah. but we are limited with the CPU. And, uh, and that, I don't know if this is a, a, a proper way to test it. So, but I think it gives me an impression uh, how the system performs. And uh, yeah, so, um, in the next couple of sessions, we will improve this a little bit. And uh, once I'm ready with the Golang code, then we can compare this with uh, the Node.js version. And then we will see uh, what is the difference. And then we can play a little bit. So we can play with the endorsement policies uh, uh, when we have uh, an or and then an and. So or when we have uh, two or three more endorsers, uh, how these affects the system. And of course we can use also um, CouchDB in this. So, and then we can see, uh, is the system uh, a little bit faster uh, in the invoke process or slower? And so we can learn more about the system, how the system works and how uh, the performance is, uh, uh, how you can see the performance and uh, which configuration you really need at the end of the day for a real uh, world scenario. Okay, so I think I'm at the end. So, oh, and I uh, know seven persons online. So thanks <laughs> uh, for participant until the end. Uh, someone raised the hand. Yeah, yeah, this is Kali Swaran. Yeah, thank you so much for, you know, this wonderful session. Like, this is a session, like, you know, very useful. Uh, thank uh, you. Uh, and one more thing, like, uh, in the Linux, Linux Foundation recently, they recalled uh, support uh, for java language they're only supporting for node.js is there any reason for that yeah. hmm i don't know uh, so i mean okay. i think that's a problem or that's a question uh because uh that's i think that's fabric is 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 uh plug and play so they call it plug and play and when when they have enough people uh, which uh, contribute to the Java project a Java chain code project then they will increase this when they have enough people uh, for the Golang or Node.js uh, project then this project will work so this is I think that's not uh, that's community driven and uh, I think it depends how the community contribute to each uh, part project and um, and in the end uh, some i read something about uh, rust as a uh, for chain code so and uh, when there are enough people who um, contribute to this project then i think we will see rust as another uh, chain code language and uh, but 
that's I think I'm not the right person to answer this question because <laughs> I have this I think I have the same <laughs> informations like you. Uh, nobody talked to me and say okay um, uh, our plans for the next uh, future is to improve the Java uh, chain conversion or the Node.js. So yeah. and it's also for me it's a little bit uh, confusing that uh, when it comes to the Linux foundation in terms of the certification. So the chain code, uh, the developer certification uh, has started last, last year, I think, and uh, in the 1.4 version. And uh, you, have, you, you could choose between the Go version for the chain code and uh, the Node.js version for the chain code. And uh, on the client side, there was uh, the Node.js version. And then they have uh, um, stopped the, certif the certification. And uh, now, uh, two months or one month ago, I received an email uh, that in March, uh, they will resume this process uh, again, uh, but only with the Node.js. So uh, they resume the certification with the Node.js on the chain code side and also on the client, client side. I mean, that's a little bit the reason why I have focused me a little bit on the chain code side for the uh, for Node, uh, on the Node.js for the chain code uh, development, and uh, maybe that helps someone who is going to try the exam, the developer certification in March, April, or this year. And um, yeah, but I don't understand why they don't have, uh, uh, maybe they don't uh, use the Golang also for their certification, because the Golang is, uh, I think- Native, native yeah, native language, support. Native support. Yeah. And that's also, I wrote some articles about, um, from guys, they said, okay, no chess is so, um, it's not performant, it's slow, and it took so much storage, uh, the chain code container took, took so much storage and so on. And um, I said, why? And uh, that's also the reason why I try to analyze this and do a small example like this, what you have seen today, and compare this uh, with uh, Node.js and the same with uh, the Golang. And then we have we see it clearly what is uh, how this performs and what is what is better, what is better for that. No? And that's the reason why I uh, focus a little bit now on this Node.js. Um, chain code development. And I think when you know all these steps here, then you will you will recognize that um, it's not so difficult to write uh, so a standard uh, a chain code for a standard implementation. So it's not so difficult, I think. When you know these steps, when you know how you can test this, when you know that you have the, in the package JSON, the start command, when you know that the start start command will be installed to this Ferrix Kim uh, shim package. So these are some 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 uh, um, hard learned facts. So I have uh, invested a lot of time to figure that out, <laughs> and uh, and that's also the reason why I put this online and uh, write this down. So. Uh, because it took a, lo a lot of time to figure this out and uh, make an, 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 an development and joint development process like today in, in nearly uh, two hours. So, and uh, yeah, but I don't know why they uh, skipped the Java for chain code, but uh, in the documentation, I think uh, is it all, all already named. Okay, so why I asked this question because I am from the Java background and I mm -hmm. just just wanted to. Last year I registered for the exam, but uh, in the middle they you know, recalled uh, the Java yeah. support. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but from I the bottom of my heart, like uh, this one, this almost two uh, two hours session, uh, entire my throughout my entire my career. Um, uh, I don't see such a such session. Uh, no, you have given a great session uh, for this small group. Um, I really, really appreciate uh, uh, for your effort and the time you have invested for these sessions. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question?
Okay, if not, then um, you can give me support. Uh, no, not support, you can give me a feedback. So um, if you want, and uh, if you want to try my examples and um, on the GitHub here, and uh, this session is recorded. And, uh, and I think uh, tomorrow it will be available. And then I will send, um, I will post this on the uh, meetup, in this meetup thread. And then you will receive also the link to the, to, to the slides, to the slides here. And uh, also uh, in the slides, you will have here this, uh, uh, this GitHub repo and you find here uh, a step-by-step. -step, so, uh, uh, guide so it it's important for me to know uh, if you can work with this guide so if somebody of you try this guide try to follow this this guides here so when you try to uh, test the docker dev mode here then you can follow one of these guides here when you see the docker edition so and then uh, it would be a cool if you try this and say, okay, I can work with this, this uh, tutorial will work or not. So, and uh, this would be uh, a nice feedback uh, for me to see if this is also, this works for another person, not only for, for myself. All right. Okay, so thank you for, for your attention and your time. And uh, I hope we will see you um, uh, on the next session. And uh, on the next session, we will uh, focus a little bit more on the Node.js part. So I will go a little bit through the last session, uh, through the requirements for the certification. So um, we can um, extend, uh, we can work a little bit with CouchDB. So that's a little bit uh, uh, different. And also we can use the attribute based chain code. So uh, that could be a small side uh, step to Fabric CA. And uh, then we can uh, make a little bit more, uh, or we can use a little bit uh, more from the permission side. So we can say if um, this user, this particular user is from the marketing uh, department, then you can use this chain code or you can use this function, for example. So, and, uh, and this is uh, uh, also very interesting. And then you can uh, see a little bit from the Fabric CA um, and uh, with the Fabric 2.2 network script, we can start this also very easily and uh, that's the reason why I show you this network uh, script uh, every time, because when you know how this is working, then you can uh, test a lot of different configurations in uh, without any um, effort, I think. So, so you can use CouchDB, you can, you can use Fabric CA and so on. You can use uh, free uh, endorsement peers, whatever so it's it's really uh, a good way to test and to see uh, and to learn how fabric uh, works okay so thanks um where to send feedback yeah you can send that's a good question you can send uh, you can send feedback in the slack channel of course um i will share this uh, link here. I think you find this link also on the um, on the meetup page. On the meetup page, uh, we have this Slack channel. Ah, no, sorry. On the meetup page, there is only the text that you. So, but I wish maybe if I find it here, I can give me a minute. Um, ah, here. I hope this link will work. So I think that must be the correct link to the Slack channel. 
will there be any session of soft hydrogen? Yeah, I maybe I will. Um, I can prepare something like that, but not in the upcoming sessions because uh, I want to focus a little bit more on the on the uh, chain code side and on the um, client side because uh, for myself I'm going to. Uh, try the developer certification and um, that is part of my learning process now and uh, all the examples are part of this learning process and uh, that's the reason why I have uh, focused uh, for the next uh, upcoming sessions uh, on this part. So, but if this is ready, uh, then we uh, can switch back uh, to, uh, to this topic and then I can prepare uh, such a such a session. But this uh, is an open uh, meetup session. So if someone of you want uh, to make a session, then uh, come uh, connect me uh, and, uh, and then you can, you can do a session by your own. You can show also your examples and what you have learned. So that's not a, um, a course or something like that. That is a session uh, from the community for the community and every um, contribution contribution is well is welcome. So uh, if you would like to uh, um, open also a topic for that, so you can make a part of this presentation uh, and so on, or show what is your problem, and then uh, we can see uh, how we can uh, fix this and uh, make it. So it's not a school here, it's uh, from the community for the community and everybody of you can take part of the session, sessions here. Okay, so link is shared uh, and I think uh, you have also uh, connected, yes. Yeah, so thanks for your attention and um, see you next time.